For more insight on Trump's strategy and the local perception, we have Mike Leon, an NTD news contributor and the director of policy and strategy at the Free and Equal Elections Foundation. Mike, thank you for joining us again. You grew up in the deep blue Bronx in the exact neighborhood where Trump was campaigning in last night, in fact. How do you read the political strategy behind this? Chris, good to see you first and foremost. It's taking me back, man. I played as a little kid in Cortona Park. My family grew up on 170th in Cortona Park South. So shout out to the Bronx always. But um, this is, you know, I started thinking about this yesterday. And for our show, I had a reporter on who's been covering the campaign and the trials of Donald Trump as well, specifically in New York. And one of the sentiments that she gave to me was this was coordinated by the campaign because of the New York trials. Remember, the former president was having the E. Jean Carroll suit and then obviously the Trump organization suit. So a lot was happening in the New York area in addition to the Manhattan trial. So the way she laid it out to me was the campaign said, OK, let's make a strategic play here and let's do a couple of rallies in New York and New Jersey. So that's why you saw the Wildwood, New Jersey one not too far away from Pennsylvania, which was a swing state. And then obviously the one yesterday in the Bronx. So I think the strategy of the Trump campaign was let's try to keep him in, in areas. Yeah, we know it's deep blue. We know the, the chance of him winning New York and New Jersey are potentially not in play. But there are voter makeups there in those areas where we could have a rally. We can create some long form content from it, create campaign ads off of it. And I think that's the strategy that you're seeing them implore. And it's kind of changed my mind as to why he's done these rallies in these deep blue uh, areas. Now, as someone who grew up in the South Bronx, tell us about the community's response to Trump holding a rally there uh, and what you personally make of it. Yeah, I mean, well, the community aspect of it, look, the Bronx is 85 to 90 percent African-Americans and Latinos is very few, you know, under 10 percent of, of white or Asians in the area. You know, we're always distrusting the Latino community specifically and African-Americans as well, distrusting of politicians on either side of the aisle. You know, there are people that will tell you that they felt that the Obama administration didn't do enough for African-Americans, obviously, as the first African-American president. There are people that tell you that Biden hasn't done much. And obviously they look at consumer goods year over year and they say, look, we're, we're making less and we're paying more for things. Right. So I think Trump visiting the area while it may bring a good sentiment, the, one of the things that I was told from people on the ground there was, there, and the package played it there too. Jack interviewed a couple people that came from out of town to come to the area. So Cortona Park is not the biggest park, Chris. Like it's, it's not the hugest place to have some type of rally like the Wildwood one was very open and space wise. So I think he couldn't have as many people potentially as he wanted there. And so I think the sentiment is, it's great to see a former president visiting and you, I can't remember the last time Obama or Biden went to a deep blue pocketed area and had some type of rally or event to speak to voters in this type of magnitude. So that is great. But a lot of people always look at it with the side eye, as we like to say, and say, why is another politician coming over here and trying to cater to get our votes? So there's always two ways to kind of look at it. OK, so in media interviews with rally goers, we saw numerous attendees express, I guess you could say, a sense of amazement and delight that a presidential candidate actually visited the South Bronx. You know this community like we're talking about. What do you think this type of acknowledgement by an effective presidential nominee means to them? Yeah, you know, it was kind of like I was saying, I, I, I think it, uh, again, for the Trump campaign, this is what they want because there is polling that shows Pew Center, Pew Center, a Pew Research Center, excuse me, came out with some recent data that shows the margins that Donald Trump is cutting into the African American vote and the Latino vote. Now, look, I live here in Miami, right? So the Latino vote down here has increased for Trump from 2016 to 2020. We'll see what it does in 2024. So obviously, they're trying to make inroads with both of these communities. And like I mentioned, because of the trial schedule, it's been tough for him to go to some of the battleground states like in Arizona, uh, you know, maybe like on Ohio and obviously go out there and campaign. So they've done this from a strategic play. I think I think the members of the community that do appreciate a former president coming in there, you know, there was somebody in the package that played there, Chris, that said, you know, Democrats tend to take, you know, the black and, and Latino vote for granted. That's a sentiment that's felt throughout the community all the time. I hear that all the time when I'm talking to voters in focus groups. So I do think, you know, there's two ways to think about it, right? Do you want somebody that at least shows up 
and tells you what they're going to do for you? Maybe they don't do it for you down the road. Or do you want somebody that never comes to where you are and doesn't even pay attention to you and still expects you to vote for them? And that's the challenge and the question that's going to be raised come November, you know, on the ballot. Now, what do you think uh, that this rally in the South Bronx means for Democratic voters in this community and people who usually wouldn't even come out to vote in the first place? Is this enough uh, for them to come out and vote for Trump? I don't know if it is. I mean, you heard in the in the package that Jack was playing, there was a couple of uh, folks that are aligned with some groups on the Democratic side and assemblymen. You know, obviously, this is in AOC's district right on on the line of her district there. So and we know the percentage that she won by. Obviously, all House seats are up. I, I don't know if it flips anybody in, in specifically in New York, Chris, when it comes to New York. But I do think for the campaign, like I mentioned, it creates content for them and, and a long tail effect where they can say, look at what we've done in terms of going out to speak to Hispanic voters, to speak to African-American voters. Remember, Chris, the, the president also went to Spanish Harlem, to a bodega up there to visit with more voters uh, as the trial was happening in New York. So even though he's been kind of quasi confined to New York, he's made the most out of it by trying to visit some of these pockets of areas, whether or not it will sway voters. I mean, the data doesn't show that, but it does show that he's cutting into the margin, which is something he can take out on the road to an Arizona, which has, you know, a third of registered independent voters, a large Latino population. He can take that to other swing states that have a similar makeup to what you're seeing demographics wise at some of these rallies that he's had in these deep blue pockets. All right, Mike Leon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Chris.